some of you that really are, right? Oh, there's a new spirit. There's a picture of lady. <laughs> You guys are winners. You guys are awesome. Aww. I think you just actually go home. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about it just in case there's a few of you, just a small few that don't believe you're a winner or want to win. we got to have a winner's mentality to be Christians because we've got to win the race marked out for us and the winning prize is up there in heaven for each and every one of us. You know, um, we, we, Michael always says this, and it's a great perspective. I'm going to try and help you with it if you have a winner's perspective. Okay. So, you know, we can say we have bad days, right? But a better way, a winner would say, we don't have bad days. We have character-building days. Amen. So no matter what you're going through, that is an opportunity for God to work on your inner character Come on. and make you a better person. So there's no bad days. There's no loser days with God when with the right attitude. You know, without commitment, you'll never start. But without consistency, you'll never finish. Come on. We've got to finish the race. So winning is not everything in terms of the tug of war. My team, I got recruited by a lady to be on the tug of war team and my team lost. My team lost and I actually was part of Michael Adrian's team losing because I was coaching my son and this, the thing had already started. And he, you know, I'm mom, so he's listening to mom and then we lost. So we lost twice. I was a loser twice. However, however, winning is not everything. But wanting to win is wow. everything. And that lady wanted to win. And we've got documentary on that now. <laughs> that face. That warrior face. If she ever says, I can't do this, just show her that picture. You can do this. Bring out that inner ninja. That inner ninja. All right. With, with winners, winners say, you know, this might be difficult. But it's possible. Yes. Losers say it may be possible, it may be possible, but it's difficult. Mm. Do you believe that you were, I know that's a bit of a funky one. <laughs> Somebody's looking at me like I didn't quite get that. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. All right, I'll, I'll text it to you. Maybe when I text it. <laughs> I'm not going to keep on moving here and be a winner. Yeah. You were born to win. Do you yes. believe that? Yes. Yes. Here's why. And I'm going to convince you with just two scriptures. I could share about 25 scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God who gives you victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are a winner because you love God and you love Christ. Christ Amen. enables you to have victory in your life. Victory is about winning. 1 John 5 4 to 5, verses 4 to 5, the TPT version. Who is a child of God here? Put your hand up. All right, this is for you. Every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating the power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son. Do you believe you are a world conqueror in Christ? And I'm going to talk about victor or victim shortly. Because we can struggle with that mentality. I know I felt many times in my life powerless and victimized by my circumstances, by certain relationships, by my financial situation. Uh, Right now it's studying for ICCM. I can feel a victim to that. I don't feel victorious in uh, going after my masters in ICCM. But, you know, it's good to see when we understand that we have victory in Christ and some of these the two scriptures that I shared, we are standing upon victory because we are a child of God. So whatever comes our way, whatever obstacles, whatever financial issues, whatever illnesses may come our way, whatever relationship issues come our way, those we can view as just clouds. Going 
across, they'll, clouds come and go, clouds come and go. But when the clouds vanish, we're still on the mountain of victory. Amen? Amen. The truth is that God has placed you on a mountain of victory through Christ Jesus, Amen. through being a child of God. Never forget that. That is your victory in Christ. You can only live once, Mae West once said, but if you do it right, once is enough. Mm. This is it. Mm. This is it. This is our life. Are you living your life wow. in victory? Wow. The title of the lesson tonight is called To Win As Many As Possible. Come on. And I get that title, many of you know, I've heard it a million times, in 1 Corinthians 9. Come on. Yeah. Paul had a winner's mindset. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 to 27, open your Bibles, and we're going to read about this winner's mindset that won many to Christ, and through Paul, he was able to plant many, many churches and evangel help evangelize the world in that generation. In 1 Corinthians 9, <coughs> verse 19, the Bible says, and this is Paul writing, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone. Right here off the bat, we see Paul was not a victim. He was a free man as each and every one of you are free in Christ. But he chose to make himself a slave to everyone. You are not, you are not, you do not have to be here you have free will to be here. No one is making you be here. You are choosing to be here. And examine your heart if you feel like you have to be here. It's a choice. You are not a victim. You're a victor. Paul made himself a slave to everyone out of the freedom that he achieved through his being born again in Christ. To do what? To do what? What does it say? To win as many as possible. And how did he do that? To the Jew, he became like a Jew. And he was an amazing Jew, taught by the best, so he could win them. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so to win those under the law. To those not having the law, non-Christians, I became like one not having the law, though I'm not free from God's law. Amen? Amen? So when you're trying to win someone to Christ, you do not go to the nightclub and have a pint and get drunk because you're trying to win those people, right? No, 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 no. You become all things to all men, but you're still under the law. Amen? Of Christ. Amen. Though I am not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law. Just in parentheses, just in case we go a bit liberal there. Thanks, Paul. The Bible says it, we do it. Amen. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak. To win the weak. I become all things to all people. So that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? We don't enter a race. We don't play tug of war to lose. We play to win. Therefore, Paul says, run in such a way as to get the prize. Have a winner's mindset. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. How incredible. What motivation to win. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that I, after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified, disqualified for the prize. And the church said, Amen. Amen. We need to run in such a way to get the prize. We need to be intentional about what we think and what we do. God wants us to win. He yeah. gives us and promises us victory. And as I said, what was Paul's chief goal? To win as many as possible. Charles Spurgeon once said, our great object of glorifying God, who does not, who wants to glorify God? Yeah. Amen. Our great object, how do we glorify God in our lives? Well, 
Charlie says to be mainly, our object of glorifying God is to be mainly achieved by the winning of souls. And that's why all that work went into Women's Day. It wasn't for us. We have, we did it on a Sunday, but we, we have our services. We have our disciples. We are saved. We did it to glorify God by winning as many as possible for him. And showing people the beauty of being a woman in Christ. It's awesome. That video in itself is so inspiring. The stories of changed lives is so inspiring. But it's a, it's a radical goal to win as many as possible. It's challenging, it's tiring, it's strenuous, it's a labor. It's like childbirth. Many of you, I I loved what Lady and Anna and different people have shared tonight about women that are coming around wanting to know about God. But trust me, it's a labor. They're open, but man, you're gonna fight because it's a spiritual battle. Satan doesn't want you to win. And she definitely doesn't want the woman you're studying with to win. It's a radical goal. And that is why the Bible says that only some are one. Wow, come on. Wow. Only some are one. So as you give your whole heart and set your heart on wanting to help these women, guard your heart. Yes. Guard your heart as well. Because only some are one because of their own hearts. And we know that because of the parable of the sower. There's yes. different hearts. There's different hearts. So... Let me go back. I lost my track here. Um, it's, a, it's a worthy goal. There's nothing in life more worthy than seeking and saving the lost. It's an essential goal. What is more essential than saving a soul? Paul says five times that his aim is to win people. But what does it require? And if you have a, a little, uh, if you have your Bibles, it says in the section right before you do you know that in the race all the runners run, is the, 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 exactly, who said it? Read, read what it says. The need for self-discipline. The need for self-discipline. So what do we need to win as many as possible? Self-discipline, indeed. To be a winner, we need to have self-discipline. And when I was a non-Christian, I decided I had moved to Portland and I found Portland a little bit of a, it's kind of a colloquial city, it's not like a big city, and I'm a big city girl. There wasn't a huge fashion center. It's very Northwest America. Northwest America is mountain. People go hiking. Patagonia is the in, like, label, North Face. All the things I was like, oh, wow. Like, people were hiking boots. Uh, Frankie would have loved it. People hug trees. People hug trees. Everyone's organic, vegan, Birkenstocks. That whole thing. And I was, I, it wasn't my thing. It wasn't really my thing. So what I did, I started to run. I actually worked for Nike for a very short time. And I was dating a guy that worked for Nike. So I got all this really cool gear. So I was like, okay, got some nice gear. Might as well be athletic. So I decided, just in my extremism, extremist, whatever the word is, extreme, extremism is a word. Thank you, Maria, grammar teacher. Extremism. In my extremism, I'm like, I'm going to run a marathon. So I did. But I had to go into strict training. And it was good for me. It was good for me. I actually, um, I looked it up. I bought a book. I went to learn how to run. I went to, every week I would uh, do what they call speed racing, which creates endurance. And I would go for long runs and long runs. And then you, hit, you, go, to, you go as far as about 14 miles. And the, Okay, we, I know we're in kilometres. I have to do it in miles because I don't know what kilometres. Because back in America, we, everything was in miles. 14 miles, but it's a 42-kilometre race. That's the idea. 42-kilometre race. And I'd get to about 14 miles because it's a 22-mile race, if you talk about miles. And that's about... So then once you do 14, you have a good gauge of, okay, I can just do the rest, you know, on the big day. Anyway, why am I getting there? It was a mindset. Uh, You don't enter a marathon and you don't do anything without strict training. And it was incredible. I actually self-taught myself. I mean, I learned of other people. But I'm five minutes off my time. I finished in 3.35... And in order to, yeah, it's a pretty good time. It's an eight and a half minute mile, which is really good. Eight and a half minute mile for 22 miles. That's a quick pace. That's a quick 
quit. And uh, <laughs> um, so I, I was five minutes shy of qualifying for the Boston Marathon, which is the most famous marathon in the world. Anyway, it was great. I was going to share something about that. Um, <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, 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 oh gosh. Mindset. It's gone. <laughs> Self denial in order to win souls. But the marathon thing, there was something really interesting about that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But anyway, <laughs> self-trained, I, I wanted to say something about training my, I can't remember, but, but it was an incredible, that's what I was going to share. Mm -hmm. So what was incredible about that was that it actually made me happy. Yeah. I found so much joy in running. It, mm -hmm. and, and Krista's starting to find that. She's oh, yeah. that. She is. She's starting to find that. And she, I mean, I had some mental health, and, and, and so Krista shared, at Women's Day, she had some mental health. So running really helped me. And then recently, I read a book called um, The Body Keeps a Score, which is about trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Comic is on that by a med student, Imperial. Wow. Body Keeps a Score. And what it says was one of the ways that people are able to get rid of trauma, the only way to get it, we've got to get it out, is through tears or through physical. Um, drumming, dance, wow. yoga, but running. Yeah. Running actually helps the body get rid of trauma because of the repetitive breathing involved. So for three and a half to four and a half hours that people run these things, you are in kind of a meditative zone where your body is able to just get into some breathing sort of situation that allows the body to heal. Wow. So I didn't even know, but it's just amazing to me how we're drawn to things prayerfully that feel good for us, not like yeah. the, other, the sin stuff, but that we're drawn to things in the world that can actually help us. So anyway, that's a side note, but that was really cool to find out like, wow, I was trying to find healing yeah. big time in the world. And I actually run another marathon. And the sad thing about that was that took me another hour. It was in Seattle and it was just it was pouring, and I wasn't prepared, mm -hmm. and I became a loser, a mindset. Because that, from that, from going down from 3, 335 to four and a half minutes, I nearly didn't, I nearly did, I nearly quit. I nearly quit. And I was just like, oh, I guess i got to get through this. I walked some of it. It was just awful. But my point when all that, I gave up after that. Mm -hmm. I gave up. And I was like, wow, I just didn't have the character. Instead of saying I had a character building race, I was like, I failed, I had a bad race, and I'm never going to do that again. I'm wow. never going to put myself on the line. And I think so many of us can do that. Yeah. We can get victories sometimes yeah. early on in our spiritual lives. Yeah. They happen. Great job, starting to date, fruitful. But then we have that bad marathon, <laughs> that really right. bad marathon, and yes. it's, it's well, raining. Yeah. Our shoes hurt. Mm -hmm. We cramped up. We didn't expect hills and terrain that wasn't in the Portland race. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we just, it was freezing mm -hmm. in Seattle that day. I still remember it. And I still remember going, I've got five more miles, 19, 20, 20, three more miles. And I was, it was just like, I, am, I can't do this anymore. But I pushed through. But I gave up. Mm -hmm. I gave up on myself. And I think, you know, is there anything in your, right now, are you at mile 19? Is, are you at mile 19? You know, take stock. You can do this. And the, the trick to running a marathon is just counting. Sometimes I just count. Okay, I'm just going to count for 100, and then I'm going to see how I feel. 99, 100. What, 100 more? 100 more. I don't know if you've ever trained in running, but in treadmills? You're like, okay, two more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Two more minutes. And you get that cranking song, and that's four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Trick yourself. Yeah. I'm like, you did four. Yeah. Okay. Now it's 18 and a half. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to do 20. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Minutes mindset. Yeah. You see how powerful your mind is? Yeah. You trick 
yourself. Yeah. Like, like you, you know, we've got two minds, don't we? Yeah. The quitter and the winner. Wow. wow. Man, wow. the quitter and the winner. Yeah. And you can trick the quitter. Come on. Come on, quitter. Just, just 10 come more on. steps, quitter. You can do this, quitter. Come on, quitter. Come on. The, the, the winner's like, come on, get up. Okay. Right. Yeah. As I said, 18 and a half minutes. Are we going to quit now? No. The quitter's like, nah, okay, I can do it. I mean, you know, a minute and a half. <laughs> Bring oh, that little yeah. quitter. You love the quitter, yeah. but, but don't give in to the quitter. Don't <laughs> listen to the quitter. Yeah. Love the quitter, don't listen to the quitter. Okay? Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. My first point is win for God. Come on. First and foremost, we need to win as many as possible, but we need to win with God. Sorry, yeah. win with God first, okay? How do we win with God? First, having great quiet times. Yeah. <laughs> That makes God happy. In 1 Kings 3, write it down. For time's sake, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But write it down, 1 Kings 3, verses 5 to 14. This is the story of King, Day, uh, King Solomon. God visits King Solomon in a dream. And he asks something that would be our dream question. He says to Solomon, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Ask. Wow. And what would you, how would you answer that question? Oh, God. Wow. And he's in a dream. What's so interesting is in dreams, our subconscious is that word. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a lot of control. I've been in a few weird states recently where I, I was terrified in my dream. I still can't, I can't remember. And I could feel my heart beating. Yeah. And I was like, I'm really scared in this dream. And I told myself, the winner mindset was like, you're in a dream, you're in a dream. But my loser of my mind was like, no, I'm gonna die. I was like, no, no, you're in a dream. You're just in a dream, chill out, you're in a dream. And then my heart rate went down. But, 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 but our real heart comes out sometimes in the dream. We can't control it, right? Yeah, yeah. So wow. what's beautiful about Solomon is that he says, give me wisdom to lead your people. Yeah. His subconscious was with Christ. Wow. Wow. This is, wow. yeah. Oh, you know, what is our subconscious doing? <laughs> what are we dreaming at night? Oh, it's just got to confess. Oh, <laughs> in your dream yesterday wow. about my coworker. Mm. Now, okay, I'm going to say this because you're not technically in sin. Yeah. Because why? You didn't willfully have that dream. Right. However, mm-hmm. yeah. thought life, talking to that co-worker by the cooler, yeah. may not have helped with that pure dream, right? Yeah. right. Impure dream. Right. So, mm-hmm. amen. You're not in sin. Mm-hmm. But when I have, I've had impure dreams, yeah. and I'm a married woman... I have to go, where is my heart? Yeah. Right. You know, and sometimes it could be just bitterness, anger towards God, or any unforgiveness. It could be other things. It might not be definitely or the co-worker, because oftentimes that person in my dream isn't someone real, like someone I don't know. Yeah. But check your heart. So Solomon's heart was so pure that he says, I want to know, I want to have great wisdom wow. so I can win yeah. as many as possible. Mm-hmm. And we win not only the lost, but we win when we keep the saved saved. Yes. Amen? Yes. When we can lead the people wow. with great wisdom. With great wisdom. So this deep place of, so, of subconsciousness re- re- revealed either deep selfishness or deep selflessness. And for wow. Solomon, it was deep selflessness. Wow. We don't win until we begin to win with him. Amen? Amen. 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 And then in verse 15 of, uh, of that chapter 3, it says, When Solomon awoke, he worshipped God. Wow. He worshipped God. And then he blessed the people by making a big barbecue with all the sacrifice. <laughs> he just like this. Let's go, guys. This is for you. Let's party. Such a selfless heart. And, you know, God was pleased. The Bible says in verse 10, that the Lord was pleased with Solomon. The Lord, he, Solomon won favor with God because of his selfless heart, because he loved the lost. Where are you at in terms of your heart? Are you worshiping God 
And then you do, from your worship, you will reach many. You'll be able to share that great love for God with others. Amen? Amen. So you're going to win with God. Do you have a me heart or a we heart? We're in this together. Do you have a me heart or a we heart? I pray you have a we heart. Amen? You've got to win yourself. As I said, we have a loser's, a loser mind, and we have a winner's mind, right? In us, battling every day. In John 5, let's turn there. I love this scripture about the healing of the man that had been lame for 38 years. 38 years. John 5. We need to win ourselves. Because we have a loser mindset in us mm. that we have to battle mm. and Satan is best friends with our loser mindset. Mm. They are buds. Oh. They are buddies. They're having quiet times together oh, no. figuring out how to discourage you and make you quit. Mia's eyes are like <laughs> Satan and my <laughs> yes Mia we gotta fight the loser mindset in us because Satan does likes that loser mindset Mia. All right, so in verse five, so, G- so Jesus sees a man and he says, and in verse five, he says, when Jesus saw him lying, okay, let me just go there real quick, actually. I'm so scared to touch this thing and then I'm like, just touch it. I was kind of like, I've been trained by Rachel, so I was just trying to like, I mean, I'm comfortable the whole way. Put my feet up. <laughs> All right. It's quick. <laughs> is, this, is this bigger than normal? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what's something different here? <laughs> oh, my days. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, my gosh. Oh. All right. Good. This thing. <laughs> my God. We're taking, taking it up to another level. Goodness. We're winners here. <laughs> Fiber ministry. <laughs> okay, verse 5. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? That's a pretty simple question. Amen that we can go, oh, that's a weird question. Who doesn't want to get well? But Jesus knew his heart. Yeah. Now, when you ask a question like that, what's the obvious two, yes. two answers? Yes? No. 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 Right? Yeah. Pretty basic. Yeah. Right. Wasn't trying to get a psychology analysis of why. You know, just, do you want to get well? Yeah. What does this guy say? Sorry. 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 Thank you. Yeah, it goes on. He doesn't just say yes or no. He says, well, sir. He doesn't say Lord yet. He says, sir. He didn't know Jesus was Lord yet. Wow. Sir. I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Wow. Haven't we been there? Someone else. Who, <laughs> you know... Do you have that nemesis that someone else in your life? She always gets the she always gets to share. She always gets the bigger meal, the bigger piece of chicken. She always gets she's always mentioned by Michelle. She's always standing by Michael. Whatever, whatever. Someone else. Who is that someone else that's making you a victim? Why? Why? Because if you say yes, I want to get well, what does that mean? Work, 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 work. <laughs> Rihanna, you gotta work, baby. You gotta hustle. You gotta have a hustle. Let's go. Come on. You 
want to run a marathon? Yes? All right. I worked. Right. I worked. Yeah. I put in miles upon miles. Yeah. Come on. I trained. Come on. I wow. suffered. I was sore. But I wanted to win. Come on. I wanted to win. So, yeah, if he had said yes, he would have had to take personal responsibility. Wow. I am here, 38 years lame, because on one level, I chose to be here. Wow. Yes. On one level, I have to accept that I actually don't want to get well, even though that's wow. really Come on. twisted. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Wow. There's a part of me that doesn't want to get well. Mm. There's a part of me that has bought into this invalid thing so much. My whole lifestyle is around it. All my friends are part of that. The people I follow on social media all identify with that. The government gives me money for that. Come on, sis. Do you want to get well? Mm -hmm. It comes at a cost. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Healing? You think wow. it'd be a no-brainer? Yeah. But our identity and our everything is so locked in to that invalid mindset. Wow. That being stuck. <coughs> he had bought into it so much. He wasn't willing to answer the question. And of course he wouldn't say no, because that would look stupid with everyone standing there. I was like, dude, what's wrong with you? Why are you even here? Right? So examine, where are you at? What's your excuse right now to not grow, to not win? Right. What's your excuse? What is stopping you? Yeah. And yeah, it's painful. That's a painful question, and it's a painful question to examine and ask yourself, because it requires change, and you may not want to change, because you don't have the faith to change. Right. Yeah. Mm. And that's okay, because you're with a group of people that will support you and help you and cheerlead you on. Amen. And I think a lot of times, you know, here's this man's story. He's got unhe unhealed pain, he's got distorted perspective, and he's got limited thinking, and he's got unbelief. And that's what I was saying. We cannot just, we can just lose, have no faith to change. And that's where he was. But Christ wanted to give him a new story, Amen. a new identity. And he wanted to heal him. Do you believe you're, you, can, you, you can be a victor? Do you want to get well? You need to ask yourself, you know, is it a bad day or a character building day? It's a mindset. It's a mindset. Amen. Come on, Michelle. All of us, if not careful, can carry a story within us that is not the story that God has given us. Mm -hmm. The story we carry can be littered with chapters of unhealed pain, mm -hmm. distorted perspectives, and limited thinking. And we can carry that story to many different situations, projecting it onto future encounters. Wow. So our victim mentality can literally destroy our future, wow. our present wow. moments, our interactions with people. All men are awful. Yes, you were abused, but that's not the narrative. Yeah. That's not a true narrative. It's a story that you've created to protect yourself. Wow. You know, but these things need to be shattered yeah. in order to get healed. We need to bust through these strongholds. We need to bust through them. And we need to have faith that God can help us bust through it Amen. because the Spirit is willing. Yeah. The Spirit wants to help us. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people want healing but don't want to embrace what a healed life looks like. Oh, wow. Come on. Yeah. Wow. That is what a victim promotes, rescuing with very little personal participation. Wow. So weirdly, wow. our victim mindset is a lazy mindset. Wow. Wow. Right? Wow. It's actual laziness. And I have some of this in me. It resonates. I, I can be lazy in certain areas of my life. I would rather God just do it all. But he doesn't. It's a participation, unfortunately. For those that just want to sit there and turn the uh, remote. It doesn't work that way. Right. We cannot be rescued without our participation. Come on. And so many of us get angry with God to want to change a situation. But we're part of the process. Wow. We have to engage. Yeah. 
We cannot be just a sitting participant watching it. It won't happen. Right. We need yeah. it, a life of faith is intertwined. It's yeah. intertwined. You know, and verse 14, interestingly, later on, interesting, Jesus goes and finds the man. Oh, my days. That's incredible. Jesus did follow up. Jesus cared. Wow. Jesus did follow up. And he goes to this man and finds him in the temple and says, See, you've been made well. Stop sinning <laughs> or something worse. <laughs> Whoa, they happened to you. Stop sinning and start winning. Amen? Amen. What was his sin? <laughs> yeah, victim mentality. So Jesus warns this man very firmly. Guard the wellness, the healing you've been given. Wow. Guard it. Watch how you are thinking so that you don't fall into the old temptations and patterns that made you sick in the first place. And this is so key in our conversion stories. Yeah. We get converted. We're healed. We're fired up. But if we don't stop and get, continue to transform our minds... We will fall into old patterns of thinking because the brain, as anybody of you who are doing brain science, as, as um, I can't remember, Chanel is study, has studied, they create, our minds create pathways because yeah. our minds are always looking, our bodies are so incredible, they're always looking for shortcuts so that it leaves more energy and mind power for something else, to be creative or to do to whatever. So our, our mind's like, okay, what can we just put on a pathway here, just make it easy and quick? Oh, I'm a victim. I can't do this. I might give up. Mm. Oh, perfect pathway. That's quick. All right. Wow. Obstacle. Past, past uh, memory, this obstacle, I tried three hours but I, and I gave up. It didn't work. Okay. And the mind's like, all right, she's going to give up. Let us make it easy. Don't even go three hours. Just give up now. Mm-hmm. Great pathway. So you give up. You never create a character of pushing through. You're now creating over and over the same pathway which gets more and more entrenched into your mindset. It becomes a freeway. (laughs) Like like 20 cars now are going down. And it's like, oh, look, just take the easy road. Give up. Take the easy road. It's become a super freeway. Is that what you want? Do you know? We've got to, like, as I said, bust through. Amen. As new Christians, especially if your mindset was victim, like mine, mm. if your mindset was a victim mentality, you got to bust through. Like, yeah. like terrain that no one, Borneo, yeah. where, where she was. <laughs> Borneo, no one, not a single soul, the trees, 50, 100 years old, stuff on the ground, just debris. you got to, like, get a bulldozer and just boom, get Get a pathway. Is it hard? Is it strenuous? Is it going to take time? Yes, yes, yes. We have the power of Jesus. And he's going to help you. He's going to help you. He's the bulldozer. He's the bulldozer. You are just important. You can just get a job. You can check out at 10, 9, whatever. Okay, great job. But Jesus is the bulldozer. Okay, he's going to create that pathway. We cannot live as victims. We cannot carry unbelief. Yes, come on, Michelle. We have to believe no matter what invalid situation you're in, you can change. You can win. You are not a victim of your past. There are many people here, many, many, many people here that can testify that. Amen. Third point, win your leaders. Win your leaders. And when I say leaders, I'm not just talking about your Bible talk leader or your your disciple or your region leader. I'm talking about your husband. He leads you. Amen. Amen. Your boss. He leads you. Amen. Your parents, if you're young, they lead you. Win them. And then if you're a student, your teacher. That's your leader. You know, in Ruth 3, 1 through 6, again, for time's sake, we're not going to do much much reading, but you're going to... Trust me when I preach the word. But Ruth 3, verses 1 through 6 is the story of Ruth. We Most of us know the story. But did you know what her name means, Ruth, friend. in Hebrew? Friend. friend. Yes, it means friend. How do you win your leaders? Be a friend. And Ruth was an incredible example yes. of someone that was a friend to Naomi, her leader. You know, in Ruth 3, 1 to 6, it talks about her going into the field. Naomi says, go into the field. No, she doesn't say go into the field. They're starving. 
they're starving, but Naomi takes it upon herself to go into the field to collect food for herself and Naomi. Do you have to be sent to the fields? Or do you just go? Do you just go to win as many as possible? You've got to give your best effort. Amen. Are you loyal? Are you a friend to your disciple? Or are you looking for the next, the next cool thing on the market to trade in, to trade in your disciple to the next iPhone 14 or whatever, whatever, wherever we're at right now? Are you looking for a trading or are you grateful for the person in your life? Do you have a winner's mindset to see the winner in her? There is always something and I say this with every truth of ounce, of ounce of truth in my heart, that I can learn from anyone. Yes. 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 And if you have that mindset, you'll be a winner. Totally. Oh. The world is amazing. The life experiences of each and every one of us, the ways that we have gotten through things, the ways that we handled a miscarriage or the ways that we got through our father's funeral, the ways that we went, got through school, got through our masters, got through our work, got to come to a country we didn't even know the language mm. fascinating stories that you can learn from people are you a winner are you a winner? are you a loyal friend mm. or are you looking for the next next big trading of your disciple be a great friend be a great friend um, Hebrews 13 it the scriptures that says oh, be it, obey your leaders essentially because you can, it can make, make it a joy for them because it benefits you Amen. Amen. It benefits you. But the Amplified version I liked, it says, obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually, continually, continually recognizing their authority over you, for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men and women who will have to render an account. If you feel like our church can be a bit OCD about sin, OCD about your spiritual well-being. It's because we have to give an account to God. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. why we're OCD. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason. That's the only reason. We have to, biblically, as your leader, I give account to God. Mm-hmm. Come on, talk to and that brings a deep fear wow. of yeah. God in my heart. Yeah. A deep fear of God. A deep fear of God. And it should. It should put the fear of God in you leaders. <laughs> Take care of these men and women in your trust. Yeah. Amen. But it says, For they are constantly keep, keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men and women who will have to render an account. Do your part, therefore, sisters, to let them do this with gladness. And not with sighing and groaning. <laughs> the amplifier. <laughs> sighing and groaning. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, poor leader. <sighs> Another voicemail. <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't looked at my phone for three hours. A hundred. A hundred notifications. <laughs> Sorry, sis, I haven't gone back to you. It's been a busy day. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning. So that would not be profitable to you either. Mm. We work together. We're friends. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the, that your leaders, are, most of your leaders, most of your disciples do not work for the church. Mm. They have intense lives of their own. Yeah. They have children. They have full-time jobs. They have husbands. They have their own illnesses. They have their right. own yeah. issues. <laughs> natural. Right. The Bible says to share with, with the, what, share what's good with your teacher. Mm. Do you, do you, is it all about you, follower? You know, is, are your details just about you? Mm. Do you give, bring good news? I think the scripture that Mahela was asking her what, what scripture was. It was Proverbs. Um, and I'm just going to find it. <laughs> but, but do you also share good news to help them? Mm. Good news brings joy and gladness yeah. to our lives. Don't forget, they're human too. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They're human to take care of your leaders and win them. Amen? Amen. My last point, finally finishing up here, done. We're now on the last lap. Yes. You guys, we're winning. We're going to get a little trophy at the end. Win others. I want to share a story about a woman that represents 
being a winner in God's kingdom. She was a winner in God's kingdom. You will probably guess very quickly who she was, but she was baptized about three years ago. Less than a year later, after her baptism, she left her full-time dream job. She had been working as an actress for six years, and uh, she had gone to university to get her master's degree in acting. And she, at, at, her master's degree in acting was at a very prestigious acting school that only accepted 12 students. Wow. Wow. I was like, it was like the 12 apostles. Again. <laughs> so she has this incredible dream job. But after becoming a Christian, they wanted her to compromise her convictions of purity and start doing kissing, sex scenes and stuff. So she declined. Hello, have we not been in her What? Yeah, welcome to Hollywood, guys. <laughs> what movie nowadays doesn't have a kissing or a, or a body shot of the actress? Right. Yeah. Amen. And yeah, they're looking because they know what sells. So when she understood that it went against God's standard, she asked them to, <coughs> she went to the producer and the writer and said, please, can you change it a little bit? Because, you know, this goes against my, I, I can't do it. If, and they wouldn't change it. And they said even, even if they said, well, one of them is so, one of the scenes is just a quick pack. It's no big deal. But this woman had deep convictions because she's a winner from Jesus. Come on. Come on. And she said politely, no, I'm going to have to end my touring season with this show. So she stopped. Wow. She quit her dream job. That's not all. That was just the first year of her, of her walk. Then she started a yoga company. Uh, she has, wow. She's a yoga teacher. And then, unfortunately, with her, home, home, her business, three months later, the pandemic hit. Oh, wow. So she had to um, give that up because it was temporarily closed. And then her mom said, who was close to retirement, had a very, very uh, lucrative uh, business, and said to her, the disciple, and her other two sisters, that they should all go into business with each other and take over the family business. Very lucrative. But after prayer and getting much advice, she decided to turn it down because she realized that it wouldn't be wise to go into debt and she wouldn't be able to have a kingdom mindset if she had a lot of debt and was tied to this family business. She couldn't be winning for God. She couldn't win as many souls because she'd have to be tied down. And also her two sisters weren't disciples yet. So there could be a, a bit of contention there with, with motives or, or direction, right? Wow. She gave that up. Okay, she's not got a job in all of this. And then in the spring of 2020... She was asked to go on a supplemental mission team to Washington, D.C. She prayed, said God said it was clear, so she sold all her furniture, and then she road tripped to Washington, D.C. She left her home and friends to move to a, to a city that she'd only briefly visited twice. A mere month and a half later, after like going, okay, I'm on the team, Let's go, guys. A month, six weeks later, change of plans. Sorry. <laughs> well, her mom has to have brain surgery, major brain surgery. And her mom, is a, as I said, had a lucrative business. She's a prosperous, incredibly bright woman. Now is going and having to have brain surgery. And so this young disciple goes and goes, after prayer and advice, goes to take care of her mom 24-7 because that's the kind of care that her mum needed after, after surgery. And she says that she went through some of the hardest spiritual training she's ever gone through. Because what she thought and envisioned with her widow's mindset was that it was going to be amazing, mum's going to become a disciple, this is going to be sis, mum, daughter bonding time, became a really hard time because her mum, with the brain surgery, her personality changed, mm -hmm. as it can often. And um, she, just, she just said that it was really hard. And her mum was actually quite contentious with her during that time. So it was very, very hard for her to completely serve but not really get much um, encouragement back. Her mum was just not able to do that. Her was, and as I would be, I'd be very angry yeah. to lose lots of myself yeah. and, and be a go-getter. 
to suddenly have to get 24-7 care. Yeah. It can bring out a lot of anger in someone. So it was really hard. And then, three months later, she's called, given a call to April Baker in LA had passed yeah. away yeah. and they needed a woman's leader to lead the West region with RD. So she got the call. And because she's a winner for God, she said yes. Wow. I'll go ahead and take that role. And she moved back to LA to lead the West region. And she had very little experience and she was very sweet to call me. I remember going, saying, can I get advice about what do I need? How do I be a women's ministry leader? And I gave her some advice. I can't even remember what I said, but we had a great talk. And, um, and then she said that she, after praying and fasting, she was brought to Joshua chapter one. Moses had passed and it's time for Joshua to be strong and courageous and take on the role of leader. And I said, yes. So April being the Moses had passed and she... Victor in Christ. God, if Joshua can do it, I can do it. I just need to be strong and courageous. God be with me. Amen? No training. Zero training. So she goes, she goes says goodbye to family for the second time. <laughs> and then she goes to the West, LA West region. Four months later. <laughs> she was asked to move to London to train and move to Poland to become the Women's Ministry Leader of the Warsaw wow. International Institute. Wow. And that is now Christine! That is a winner, a winner mindset. And she wrote, I'm here now in London. My mum is still recouping and I'm now very far from my family and friends. But I know God has a plan so much greater than I know or can see. My big prayer is to be always willing to do anything, go anywhere, and give up everything. Because I know he works out everything for the good of those who love him. Guys, let's, let's say, uh,